Jesus came and we have an empty tomb there now. Here is the risen Christ. And he spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. You know, as we come and go along in ministry, me, for example, 30 years ago, when the per life was started, many of the people I know now, I didn't know them. I just came and taught the Bible study. There was no personality. There was no individual man or woman that I would see the face. They were all my students, and they were all the people that came to learn from me. But now years have come and gone. Fifty years have come and gone. And I know many people now that I didn't know 50 years ago, but Christ is still number one. And there's no new person I know. There's no new authority I know that I will see. And because he is there, I cannot talk. Hold on. I didn't know him a few years ago. And so if he comes there, he's not going to replace Christ. And then I'll say, that lady is there. If I talk about word leaders, and I talk about dressing like the world and looking like the world, and having the attire of a harlot, that lady will be offended. I didn't know her 10 years ago. That doesn't matter to me. I look at Christ. The Christ was appointed, and the Christ was anointed, and the Christ was enlisted, and he says, go. And teach all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And that's what we should do every time. Look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things, teaching them to obey all things, teaching them to do all things, teaching them to pray and have the grace to perform all things, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the people of God say another amen. The Lord will be with you. You will not draw back. You will do and say and preach everything Christ has commanded. Hold on, hold on. Look, look up here. It says, and they went forth preaching the word, the Lord confirming the word were signs following. You remember that? That's Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Hold on now. If I go out, I know what Christ has said I should preach to sinners. What Christ has said I should preach to those who are sick. But then I see some people there and I say, Lord, you have to excuse me today. Because of that man, because of that woman, I cannot say that now. They'll be offended. And this is not my state. And if anything happens, I am here by myself. And so, I deviate from the preaching of Christ. The Lord is not going to confirm the word you preach out of fear. The Lord is not going to confirm what you are saying because you are unbelieving. And you cannot preach the word of Christ. What he will confirm is his word. So, if you want heaven's confirmation, you will say, you will preach, you will declare just what he had given that will declare. And he will be with you every time. Amen. Everywhere. Amen. Until the end of the world. Amen. Another amen. amen. If you believe that, that's exactly 
what you will do. You know, I wonder, Daniel, in Babylon, he would only say and do what the heavenly father wanted him to do. They said, Daniel, that's a lion's den. And you will get there if you don't do what the committee, what they have decided. And you keep on praying unto the God of heaven, lions, who made lions? Who made you? God will not allow what he made to destroy what he made. They said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> you thought, this is like where you are coming from. This is Babylon. That is idol. And that is what we worship here. If you will not bow, if you will not bend, if you say, I'm a man of conviction, a man of courage, and this is where I stand. Uh -huh, you stand. But Nebuchadnezzar does not go by that principle or purpose. Like, uh, this is now the, what's it now? The furnace of fire. And he said, King, we're not careful. We're not worried. We're not bothered to answer you in this matter. Go ahead. Go ahead and do what you want to do. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us from the furnace of fire. What? Nobody ever faced Nebuchadnezzar to talk to him face to face like that before. He was angry. And in anger, he said they should bind those people. And he called the heftiest, strongest men in his kingdom. Cast them there. I'll teach them a lesson. Nebuchadnezzar, heaven will teach you a lesson. And he threw them there. And then all the courts of Babylon that bound them, everything was burnt. Everything of Babylon burnt away from your life. And they stood up. And they were walking in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar had never seen anything like that before. Miracle is going to happen to you. That your enemies had never seen before. And then the son of God. The compassionate high priest. He came from heaven. Think about the distance from heaven to earth. He came and he was walking with them. They saw him. I will see him. In my trial, I will see him. In the furnace, I will see him. When the greatest of men, when they come against you and they say, because of com your conviction, here is what you will do. You will not see them, you will see the Lord. Yeah. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was still a kind of fuming and rejoicing in his authority. He says, I have the fire, I have the fury, and I have the purpose. If I want to cast anybody into the fire, there, there, let me go and look at their ashes. Your enemy will never see your ashes. Yeah. And he looked inside there and said, what? These people are doing what nobody had ever done. First of all, they are standing, you will stand. They are walking, you will walk. And then he said, friends come, counselors come, senators come. Did we not cast three men into the fire? They said, yes, O king. He said, I see four men, one. That's Shadrach, two. That's a big thing. Three, look at that. And then he says, but I see a fourth man. He's the son of God. He came from heaven. And they were walking in, in the fire. If you want to see the presence of Christ and the companionship of Christ, every time, walk through the fire. The fire that the world is building. And they say, this will stop him. When you hear that information, 
don't stay at home. Don't lock your door. Get up. I, I didn't even want to go there before. Now that I hear that Nebuchadnezzar is raising up a furnace of fire, I, I like to go and repeat history. I like to go and have that miracle again. I get up and I get there and Christ will be your companion. And he said, Shekrat, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the living God. Ah, you know them now. You know who they are. You know their title now. Servants of the Most High God. The living God come forth. And he said, we're well, sorry. You know, we have to cut our fellowship for the fourth man that came. And he went to heaven and he came forth. And he examined them. And he didn't see any mark, any sign of the fire on them. The fire of heaven is in your soul, it's in your body, it's on your tongue. And the fire of the world will never have any place, any hold in your life in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? After that experience, nobody on earth threatened Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with fire anymore. Once you pass through, once you overcome, the thought you will cross, you'll be crushed, you'll clean, you'll cringe, you'll collapse because of the threats of the fire. But once you overcome that, that's the secret. Nobody will threaten you with that fire anymore in Jesus' name. Only once, only once you overcome, go through, go through, go through. And then uh, once you graduate from that class, of uh, fretful people, worried people, anxious people. What am I going to do? What, uh, get up. Get through that class. And once you go through that class, you'll not come back to that class again. <laughs> what to do, what to declare, everything he has called upon to declare, to, called us to declare. And he says, even unto the end of the world, he'll be with you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the precious promises for every member and every minister. We're looking at this under three subtitles. Number one, the exceeding great and precious promises. Number two, the extensive, gracious, and peculiar promises. Number three, the expedient, glorious, and performable promises. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the exceedingly great and precious promises. We're looking at Second Peter chapter one, verse three. Second Peter. Chapter 1, we're reading from verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. How many things? How many things are we given? How many things do you have? All things. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. And unto godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He has called you to glory. Amen. Glory you will have. Amen. Your family, glory. Amen. Or the evangelistic field, glory. Amen. In the church ministry, glory. Amen. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. How do we live a you know, low-level life when we have exceedingly great and precious promises? How do we live fearful lives, ordinary lives, human lives? How do we live impotent lives when he has given unto us great and precious Promises for life, for family, for ministry, for profession, for outside job, for an inside job. He has given us great and precious 
promises. How do we live a life that people cannot see? We even have ordinary promises. Not to talk of extraordinary promises. Many people are not living according to the privilege and the promises the Lord has given them, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises, these great promises, these precious promises, ye may be partakers of the divine nature. What nature do you have? What nature do you have? Now, look at the sheep. The sheep has its nature. Look at the lion. The lion has his nature. That's why the sheep, the lion, they don't act the same way. They don't fear the same thing. They don't tremble for the same thing. The sheep, that's his nature. It trembles. A little thunder there is shaking. Rain is shaking. And another animal comes. Animal like yourself. And he's shaking and trembling because he's sheep. But look at the lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He shakes for no one. He trembles for no one. He frets for nothing. The lion of the tribe of Judah, he has his nature. And now he has given you to be a partaker of that divine nature. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Well, the nature of the king, the nature of the Lord, and the nature of the lion of the tribe of Judah, what do you fear? How are you fearing? You can't come out. You hear something in the news, you are fretting, you can't come out. Somebody you heard, the threats of somebody, they give a sign that we're here and we're coming. Let them come. You are now having the nature of the lion of the tribe of Judah. You will overcome. You have overcome. Before the test, already the Lord has marked you that you are okay. Yeah. I am okay. I am, okay. I am all right. I am, all right. I am a conqueror. I am, I am more than a conqueror. He gives us the exceedingly great and precious promises, and we have the divine nature, happiness, cage. The corruption that is the world through loss. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the extensive, gracious, peculiar promises. Extensive. It's not the promises you had. Many years ago when you were saved, there is more. Not the promises you had. Many years ago, you were sanctified. There is more. Not the promises you had. When you were baptized in the Holy Ghost, there is more. Not the promises you had. When you began the ministry, there is more. As the trials and the temptations and the difficulties and they grow higher, you have greater promises. And those promises are sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4. We're looking at verse 20. And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not. You look at the promises of God in the Bible. And it, it, it's staggering. It's great. Unbelievable. And yet, like Abraham, you stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief. What he has said, he will do, he will do in your life. Yeah. He will do in your ministry. And you're not stuck. Yes, I see that promise. Then when you go through fire, you'll not be burnt. And when you go through the flood, you'll not be drowned. He said, because I am with you to uphold you every time. You don't say, yes, I understand. But if something is a fire, more than the fire there, there's no other fire I will go through. I said you will go through. You are not a consumable material. You are a constant material. 
that the fire of this world will not burn this conqueror made from heaven in Jesus' name. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21. In verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Every promise the Lord has given you from today, he is able also to perform. Yeah. Barren, miracle children are coming. Yeah. Fruitless, abundant fruit coming. Yeah. Weak strength is coming. Yeah. Blind, I don't even mean only uh, just physical blindness, the Lord will open your eyes. Yeah see success in front of you. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody there today? Success in front of me. Yeah. In front of me. Yeah. In front of me. Yeah. He is able also to perform. Yeah. I rejoice with you. Performance in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three is the expedient, glorious, performable promises. Performable promises. The performable promises are the promises God had made and he made to this generation. The generation of believers, the generation of ministers, the generation of true members of the body of Christ. And the Lord said he's going to perform in your life, you will do it in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 35. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence. Here now, you have confidence. Do you have confidence? Yes. That God will do what he said he will do? Do you have confidence that no fire can burn you up? Do you have confidence that everything you lay your hand on, you will, uh, you will have and receive in Jesus' name? Uh -huh. When you go out of the meeting, you don't cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. When you go out there on the field, when you go out there on the road, when you go out there to the people you saw before, and they always shout you down and they always look you down and they always terrify you by their words, by their look then uh, the confidence you had here, you see I don't know whether I have confidence now you have, you have, you have you are the one casting it away I will not cast away my confidence I see conquerors before me I see achievers before me I see people who will manifest the confidence of the name of Jesus before me in Jesus' name. Rise up and claim it. Rise up and claim it. Rise up and claim it. You will not cast off your confidence. He is your high priest. He forgives. He cleanses. He sanctifies. He empowers. Remain. Abide. In the heavenly places in Christ. You have a new nature, a new life. He has lifted you up. To search with him. And he has given you confidence. 
that whatsoever you ask in the name of Jesus will be granted cast not away your confidence of faith believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, in Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. God will answer me. God will answer me. As he answers my pastor. As he answers my pastor. My confidence. My confidence. Is that God is able. To perform every promise he has for me in the world. He will do it. Raise up that hand. If you had been defeated before, you are no more defeated. If you succumbed and fell before, God has forgiven your past new life Amen. new strength Amen. new confidence Amen. new power Amen. as your days so shall your strength be Amen. you will walk straight Amen. you'll walk in power Amen. you'll walk in authority Amen. the word of your mouth will perform miracles Amen. Keep up those hands, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are no respecter of persons. Every brother here, every sister here, everyone here, all the promises were made. I pray it will be yes and amen in every life in Jesus' name. Take unbelief away from every heart. Take cowardice away from every heart take fear of failure away from every heart lord make everyone a new creature in ministry now a new performer in ministry now a new achiever in ministry now as i speak you follow but wonders. Amen. Wonders in their own lives. Amen. Wonders in their families. Amen. Wonders in the ministry. Amen. And I pray day by day there will be extension. Amen. I pray week after week there will be extension. Months and year after year there will be explosion. Amen. Lord, use them as fire brands in Jesus' name. When they go through the fire, it will not burn them. When they go through the rivers, they will not be drowned. When they go through the army of termites, the house of faith will remain strong and healthy. And I pray, Lord, that the fears of the past gone. The failures of the past, gone. The poverty of the past, that they could not do everything you wanted them to do, passed in Jesus' name. 
a new provision for you a new prosperity for you a new performance in your life this confidence you have here now you carry the confidence everywhere you go lord confirmation here manifestation here performance for everyone go and conquer in the field that god has called you to you'll come back to the house of god with great unprecedented uncommon testimonies thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray say 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 in jesus name i pray Put that hands together. You will never lose. You are more than a conqueror. The servant of the Lord have declared it, so it is confirmed. Amen. Anywhere you go, no fire will touch you. Amen. Let's just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done today. Thank you for this minister's conference. We praise you. We adore you. We honor you. Just praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat briefly. I want to remind you that by the grace of God, the climax of the ministers' conference is tomorrow. And all the ministers who have not been attending, please remind them. Tomorrow, there are some who are in the hall down. And if you don't come on time, you may find yourself in the hall below where the overflow are. So be here on time, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Have a lot of pastors and bishops that walked in when the message have started. We will recognize them by the grace of God tomorrow, but just want you to note that the, His Grace, Most Reverend Professor E.A. Ituma, the Archbishop of Presbyterian Church of Nigeria, is here. Sir, can you just wave? God bless you. God bless you. There are so many others, so many. Please, bear with us. The list is quite long. We we'll welcome you tomorrow by the grace of God. Please, bear with us. Let's remember tonight, the crusade continues at Opera Square. The crusade continues at Opera Square by 5 p.m. And there, we welcome every other person. Please, let's be there on time, 5 p.m., and invite all other people. Yesterday was so marvelous, and tonight will be greater. Amen. Tomorrow, remember the conclusion of the minister's conference. I believe God. After this minister's conference, power for productivity will be with you. Amen. You'll be more productive. Amen. Thank you so much. If you have not registered, please 
uh, they'll give you the card, you just fill it and return. We'll be bringing the meeting to a close right here. And now, by the grace of God, tomorrow is going to be very, very great. God bless you. See you tomorrow. the praises of his people and say how wonderful you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Thank you for giving us the privilege to gather before you are present this morning. Appreciate him. The psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Give thanks to the Lord this morning for the privilege to be here this morning. Thank the Lord for the privilege of being called a minister of God. call upon his name concerning this program this morning. Commit the program into his hand. He's a God that does wonders without number. Tell him to meet you at the point of your ministerial need this morning. Are you weak? Are you fainting? Tell the Lord to strengthen you this morning. The scripture says, who is blind as my servant? Ask the Lord to open your eyes to things you have not known or things you have known but you have forgotten. Tell him this morning, Lord, open my eyes. Tell him to teach you so that you will be a blessing to your congregation. Teach me, Lord, so that I will teach my people the truth that is in your world. You need the grace of God to teach the whole truth of the word of God. You need courage. You need boldness. Without looking at faces, ask the Lord this morning, O oh God, more of your grace give to me. Mm. 
more of your wisdom. Give to me, if any man lack wisdom, if any woman of God lacks wisdom, ask and it shall be given unto you. Tell the Lord to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and give you boldness and courage to speak the truth in love without looking at the faces of people. This morning, God has an instrument that he's going to use to bless us, to teach us, to open our eyes of understanding. I want you to commit the convener. Our father in the law, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, into the hand of the law. More strength from above that the law will give him. Perfect health the Lord will grant to him. Unction to function for our benefit this morning. Pray that the Lord will bestow upon him. Pray that his words will not fall to the ground. As the sower sow the seed, pray that the seed of the word of God is going to spread, is going to sow, is going to give out, will fall at a fatal heart and bear fruit in hundredfolds. The Bible says he maketh his angels spirit and his ministers flames of fire. That the fire of the Holy Ghost will be upon our Father in the Lord this morning. That the word that will come out of his mouth will burn like fire. Didn't our heart burn? When he was speaking unto us, that should be our testimony. And it will burn off every false doctrine. The word of God will burn off every carnality. The word of God coming from him will burn off every error. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you because you are a God that answered prayers. We have committed this program into your hand and we believe this morning you will bless all the ministers, not only here at the Alpha location, but globally. None will remain the same after this morning ministration from our Father in the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Every form of distraction, take it away from us. Amen. We thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. A louder amen. amen. God bless you. You can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. It's another time in the presence of the living God. And time with God is not a waste of time. Please can we rise on our feet as we worship God. I am 
your own. I am your own till the day you will call. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. I am your own till the day you will come. Jesus, I am. One more time, I am your own, I am your own, I am your own, till the day you will call, Jesus, I am your own, receive this living sacrifice.
this a new name, written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine, I wrote in the single story. Praise the Lord. We can have our seats. Once again, I welcome you to the second day of Power for Productivity in His Service Ministers Conference, Professionals, Business Executive, and all church workers and ministers. And we thank God for the way, by the grace of God, he visited us 
on Friday. And I know that today will be greater than Friday. Amen. Just like your amen will be greater than Friday. Amen. Just like uh, your hallelujah will be higher than that of Friday. God bless you. Amen. We have a lot of people, all of us are special dignitaries, but we want to just recognize few that are here. Although some told us, please, we don't want recognition. To so such people, we respect and we say, as you have come, God have recognized you. And God will bless you. Amen. Well, let's have this few, please. And the, those who came on later, let me have their list quickly. We have Professor Ken Nadi of University of Imo, or is it Imo University? Federal University Owere. It's over there. Please let me have the. Then we have Professor Ifi, Dr. Ifi Nadi, too, who is. Here too with the husband. God bless you. I have difficulty with the list because the universities are not attached, department not attached. Then we have Professor Augustine Anne, Department of Agriculture, UNN. I think is the dean. There. God bless you. Dr. Maduka Chin Nyele, UNN. God bless you. We have Professor Cosmos Odo of Enugu State University. Have Dr. Dennis Abba Baka, Enugu State University. <laughs> and so many other doctors and professors here. Also, we have the Khan Chairman of Enugu State Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Ambassador Emmanuel Ede is here. <laughs> Sir. Can we welcome you? Is that the way you are clapping? Amen. That the can chairman of Enugu State, and has all, he has been with us. He was with us on Friday. Throughout the crusade, he has always been there. And all that can exist. Put your hand together for Jesus. We have the secretary to the PFN here with us. Sir, you are welcome. Can you rise up? Sorry, your name escaped me. God bless you. I have so many executives of CAN and PFN here. Sirs, if you wouldn't mind because of want of time, can you be on your feet so that we welcome you and recognize you, please? PFN. Can and all that. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Amen. Also, pastors of other churches and workers from other churches that are here this morning, if you are there, please, you are specially welcome. If you are there, please, can we see your hands up? Can you please stand on your feet and wave at the congregation? Please. 
you're a pastor, you're a worker, you're a, not of deeper life, see the many of them, and the camp choir is here too. Amen. We'll be on our feet to take a congregational song, please. Let's stand on our feet as we take the congregational song. Born fire of God, my lonesome soul possessed. Pure fire thou art, and I will dwell in thee. Light of my life, true source of every blessing, grant all my days one holy frame to be. Bonfire of God, thy grace and glory know. My cleansed heart shall be all fire within. Love, all constraining, tenderness overflowing. One kindling passion, other lives to win. Bonfire of God, thy grove, their cloven tongues bestow. Baptizing me with heavenly energy, touched with life code, off from thy altar grown, my parched teeth lips shall speak alone of thee, bonfire of God, with sevenfold refining tear mirrored from my deep, thy eyes shall see. In purest gold, thy perfect image shining. Thy Christ revealed in clear iradasi. Bonfire of God. Thy own loving transcending. Let all I hold be thine and thine alone. Heart, mind, will. A sacrifice ascending, consumed by fire from out thy fiery throne. Bonfire of God, we say. 
Amen. Amen. Let's have our seats as we welcome the camp choir, please. The camp choir, the camp choir, please. Please, let's come up.
gifts, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, if your language cannot edify one person, your wife, if your language cannot edify one person, your husband, if your language, if the speech of your mouth cannot edify the little circle in your family around you, how can you edify the body of Christ? We need to take all that into consideration that if you are going to be an edifier, a person that edifies, edifies the body of Christ, the edification charity begins at home. We have to look around. Am I edifying the people who are closest to me? Am I edifying the people? Am I charging them? Am I lifting them up? Am I empowering them? Am I encouraging them? The ministry is to edify the body of Christ. In verse 13, verse 13 says, till we all come in the unity of the faith till we all come in the unity of the faith that's the faith that believes in god and that relies on god that depends on god for everything and if the preacher the pastor the teacher the evangelist the prophet the apostle cannot even believe in god he cannot trust in god for Every need of his life is always depending on this and depending on that. And if he even goes to the dark world to depend upon those people that they don't claim to be Christians, they say they are idol worshippers, and a pastor and a preacher will go to them. And the fed man there uh, doing something on the ground and giving you something to eat and giving you something to drink. He says, what do you want? You say, I'm a pastor before an idol worshiper. And I want my church to grow and do something for me. That man is not called of God. If you accept what I say, say amen. amen. <laughs> he wants some juju some voodoo some things done so that his church will grow and he give him something and he buries something there it's not depending on the father on the son on the holy ghost if he dies in that condition the bible says he will not get to heaven he'll go to hell because he did not depend on the power of the Lord. Give me power. I want to work miracles. The power comes from Christ. Comes from the Holy Spirit. If you want to be an evangelist, a dynamic evangelist, and you want to see souls saved, you want to see the sick healed, the secret is not in the hand of the idol worshiper that people go to and they want something. Whatever you get there, no matter how many people are healed by that kind of power on the last day, Jesus said, they would say, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we, done, have we not done many wonderful works in your name? But I will say unto them, Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity, I never knew you. If we're going to serve the Lord, we'll come out straight, we'll come out open, and then we'll follow the pattern. Peter did not go to any kind of backyard power, a power giver, to be able to raise all that he raised and do all the miracles that he did. Paul the apostle did not go to any backyard power to do anything or everything he did. If you are like that, you have to do like they did in the Acts of the Apostles. You have to confess, you have to believe, and you have to burn all those things you had in the past because our God is enough. And Jesus is sufficient. And it says that all of us, the members, the ministers, were edifying them, were preaching to them, were enlightening them, were encouraging them until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure 
of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children that the people will minister to that our, that our our members will minister to and the people we evangelize that they will not remain babes or children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and the cunning craftiness whereby the lie in which to deceive. Verse 15, in verse 15, but speaking, speaking the truth, speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. The purpose of the ministry, the essential of the ministry, it that we so teach and we so preach that the people who listen to us will grow up. They not be toddlers and children and infants, ignorant of the doctrines of the Bible and ignorant of the possibilities in Christ all their life. They grow up into him in all things, which is the hedge, even Christ. We're looking at three points in the message this morning. And we're looking at number one, the perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. He is a model. He is a pattern. He is our goal. He is the one we're looking at. He did it and we can do it too. The perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. Number two, the promised prophet with essential message and mandate. Christ had been prophesied that he will come and he came to do what had been told of him that he will come to do and in due time at the appropriate time he came and he came with essential message he never said anything redundant anything unnecessary anything that we don't need to hear he had no knowledge Knowledge of heaven, knowledge of angels, knowledge of men, knowledge of the earth, knowledge of history, knowledge of the present, and knowledge of prophecy. But he didn't give all that knowledge. He gave us the essential message, and he gave us the essential mandate. Number three, the precious promises for every member and minister. We'll come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men the perfect priest we're talking about christ in hebrews chapter 5 reading from verse 4 no man take a day's honor unto himself but he that is called of god as was aaron look at verse 5 it says